the best way to get better at programming is to practice. And in this example, we'll be looking at doing some math functions inside of C++, namely finding the sine and the cosine. As always, this starting file is available for download via link provided below. You can download it and then follow along. All right, so let's get started. The first thing I want you to notice is that we've got a lot of stuff already set up. We have a constant for a pi. We've also created variables for radians, degrees, and length. And these are values that we're going to need. Now, you'll notice that on line 11, the double for radians, comma, degrees. Notice that comma. This allows us to declare multiple variables on the same line. Now, a lot of people find this a little bit harder to read. It is legitimate, and you do see it from time to time, but I typically like to have them on individual lines. It's just easier to read, but I want to show you how you can put things together like that. Part of it is because the radians and degrees are going to go together. So if you are going to declare multiple variables on the same line, make sure those variables are related. So what we want to do is look at using the sine and cosine functions. These actually come with C and therefore C++. We are going to need to include a new library, however. So we're going to pound include math.h. Math.h is a header file for a library of a lot of different math functions. We're just going to look at a couple of them. So if I want to find the value of my x and y position based upon a known degree in a line segment, well, I can do that. However, my sine and cosine both are taking the values in radians, not in degrees. So if I were to put in sine of 30, it would not give me what I expect. So how do I figure this out? Well, it's going to be pretty simple. I'm going to say radians equals, and a radian, you notice I put a comment in here, lets you know what it is, is pi divided by 180. So I'll say pi divided by 180 times my degrees. This will give me my radians. Now I can come in here and say see out the x position is cosine radians times length and go. I can then say see out the y position is and specify sine radians times length. If I go and run this, you notice it gives me my x position, which is 0.866, and y position, which is 0.5. I happen to know that this is correct. This is one of those things we did so often, you easily memorized it. Now, could I change these values? Of course I could. So I could come up here and say, you know what, I want degrees to be 75 degrees and the length to be 5.321. If I come in here and run this, because I knew it worked for the other, I can be fairly confident that this works as well. So this is a good example of how we can kind of test things early and then change up values. Of course, if I want to get input from the user, I could do that as well. If you found this example helpful for you, please consider watching the rest of the series and subscribing to the channel.